started the peacock in April of 2020. It's a sculpture that I had been wanting to make for several years. The vision was to use mainly patinaed copper and brass and to create a life-size scene of a peacock in mid-flight. I wanted it to look like a sculpture that you would find in a natural history museum tucked away in the basement, forgotten and dusty. As with all of my projects, I started by researching peacocks and I had a lot of questions that needed answering. I focused on the train feathers first because I thought that they would be the most complicated to make and I was correct. I spent about a month doing research and experimenting with a lot of different techniques and colors before deciding that I liked the look of cloisonne the best, which is basically enamel and copper. Then I spent the next three months making 170 eye feathers for the train. After making nearly 200 cloisonne eyes, I used thin copper wire for the barbs, thousands and thousands of four inch wires soldered to stainless steel rods of varying lengths from one foot to four feet. Stainless steel won't patina with vinegar, but copper will, and that's exactly the look that I was going for. In addition to the eye feathers, there are 12 sword feathers, six on each side. The first layer of train feathers are called the tea feathers. There are 24 of them. They're about four feet long. They are the longest of the feathers on the train. I needed a very sturdy base to support a peacock in mid-flight. It also needed to be stable and heavy so that when the peacock was attached high, it wouldn't be too top heavy. I sheeted the steel frame with stainless steel and disguised the front support as a log using an old heater tube and pipes. I wanted a natural looking scene, so I made enamel flowers of periwinkle blue and blades of grass that are cut from sheets of copper and later I patina those to be green. To complete the scene, I made hundreds and hundreds of hand formed leaves out of brass and copper. I patinaed the feathers and the grass and greens and bronze using a mixture of hydrogen peroxide and vinegar. Then I clear coated everything with several layers of matte lacquer. This process took a couple of weeks to complete. I used scrap metal and rod to create the talons and legs and then I used my MIG welder to create texture. The frame for the body is made of steel as well and then I clad that with copper mesh to form the shape and to give me a base to solder feathers to. The back of a peacock is covered with these bright yellow-green feathers and there isn't any kind of patina combination to create that color so I decided to make them with enamel copper. Then I soldered them to the base one by one. Using thin sheet copper that I cut and shaped by hand, I covered the rest of the peacock body. After attaching them, I patinaed the entire thing with a powder blue patina and highlighted some of the areas with opalescent green and the eyes I made in my glass studio with a torch. I believe it's the small things that make a work of art cohesive, creating the perfect textures and colors, finding the right balance with the similar objects, and bringing it all together in the end. And on that note, I found the perfect orange color for the flight feathers with paddock wood. Using a power carver, I shaped and detailed 60 feathers for both wings. Most of the main feathers on the wings were made by hand forming brass and the color patterns for 250 of those were created using patinas. The remaining 300 feathers are a mix of copper and brass. Sometimes as an artist you just need to get a vision out of your head and this project was that for me. I've been wanting to make this sculpture for a long time. I started the peacock in 2020 but I actually have about a year's worth of work into it. So now that it's completed, what will I do next? That's the burning question.